Hey guys, today we're going to look at this new premium phone from Oppo, the Find X5 Pro. The first thing that strikes me about this device is how glossy it is. I mean, I can see what they're trying to do here. If it's glossy like a liquid with curves like a sports car, it's going to look more beautiful. But it also becomes a fingerprint magnet, which you'll find out in about three seconds after holding this device. But the focus here is not only about aesthetics, even if that's important for premium devices, the main focus here is about taking photos and shooting videos. You can sort of tell, it's got that Hasselblad logo on it. It's an old and expensive name in cameras, and they collaborated with Oppo on this device. And it's got some of the latest tech in a phone for snapping pics and videos like Oppo's in-house Mary Silicon X Neuro Processing Unit. Oppo's self-developed imaging NPU is a breakthrough in night videography. Capture videos at night that are bright, rich in detail, and awash in captivating colors. So this device is apparently for shooting vids in low light. And if you tried to do that before, you know that most phones struggle to do exactly that with all that grain and noise. But I've shot some stuff with it. And spoiler alert, yes, most of what they're saying really works. Not all though, and we're going to discuss that later after we get through some specs. And by the way guys, I've also created chapters, so you can simply skip to the parts you're interested in. It's got an AMOLED Quad HD screen coming in at 6.7 inches with a pixel density of 535 ppi. It's an LTPO display, so it could run anywhere from 120Hz all the way down to 10Hz, depending on what's on the screen. So if the screen is displaying a static image, perhaps the home screen, it ramps down the frame rate and this saves battery. Its screen brightness maxes out at 1300 nits, making it very good for outdoors situations. I find its screen very sharp and contrasty, and it's also very responsive. Although I would have liked the fingerprint sensor to have a shorter cooldown time like on Samsung devices. It's got a 5000 mAh battery for a flagship device that's actually not bad at all. You can last a full day with this, but if you're doing something intensive like playing games or shooting videos, battery life will take a hit. There are a couple of fast charging options. We can go full 80 watt SuperVOOC using the included travel adapter, so you can juice it up from empty to full in under half an hour, like I did. Or we can go 50 watt AirVOOC wireless charging. Of course, both options are going to make your life that much easier. Its speakers are very loud, and that makes watching videos or playing games a very enjoyable experience. Yes, earbuds. Now, what's different about this video compared to my previous microphone tests is that this time I'm going to test them. Now, it's not going to fill the room, but it's loud and clear enough that I can just put it on the table, have it play a podcast in the background while I do my chores, do the dishes or something. Not recommended for music because it doesn't have much bass and it sounds a little teeny plus its track separation is quite trashy, but it's perfect for watching videos or listening to podcasts. Basically anything to do with vocals, this can perform. Okay, let's talk about camera performance because that's what this phone is really all about, right? On the back, we've got a 50 megapixel main camera, a 50 megapixel ultra wide, and a 13 megapixel telephoto. On the front, we have a 32 megapixel selfie camera. It's located in the corner, which is an odd place to be because that's where you have to look when having video calls. Anyway, we talked a bit about the Mary Silicon X chip. Its main job is to improve low-light video shooting. And after trying it for a bit, shooting pictures and videos at night, yes, it is able to replicate night mode levels of grain reduction and even exposure balance while shooting videos at night. And I found that it works really well when shooting in a stationary position, even at different focal lengths. However, when walking or camera panning, it seems to have a buffer time before the image is cleaned up and looking great again. That aside, I have never shot 
low light videos that look so clean on a phone camera, no less. So if this is something you've always wanted, that's great. The X5 Pro has that. But if it's not something you care much about, it does do a very good job with regular shooting, whether you're somebody who leaves everything on auto, or if you've got enough experience to want to fine-tune your shots. I'm talking about shutter speed, white balance, exposure, and so on. For that, there's the Hasselblad Pro mode. This mode gives you features and adjustments such as a histogram, manual focus, focus peaking, manual shutter speed, and so on. The only thing that's weird about this mode is that ISO adjustments are locked to shutter speed, although that's probably as a form of noise control. When shooting ultra-wide or wide-angle pictures, photos look sharp, detailed, and evenly exposed. With telephoto, though, I think it can be better. There's not a lot of smoothing and sharpening applied to the image, but aside from the fact that Yes, it is a smaller 13 megapixel sensor. That could be an effort to keep it looking more natural, although it isn't going to look as clean as something shot on the Samsung S22 Plus, which I reviewed over here, in case you want to check out the photos. There does seem to be a small bug with telephoto. When I turned on AI Scene Enhancement, which is a feature that's supposed to auto-enhance the color of pictures, the telephoto lens stutters between different color profiles. It doesn't happen with the other focal lengths, but I thought this is something interesting that should be brought to your attention if you're ever considering getting this device. Selfies taken with this camera look sharp and detailed, but if there's one thing that can be better about this camera, it's the background exposure. I think background looks a bit too overexposed, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. When shooting videos, the X5 Pro employs 5-axis optical stabilization on the main lens, and it seems to work pretty well because regardless of whether I'm shooting 1080p or 4K video, video looks quite smooth and the cropping in seems rather minimal. There is also a Ultra Steady Pro mode, which weirdly enough only works in 1080p 60 format, that one uses more digital smoothing, but it also causes more cropping in. So is it going to be as smooth as, say, shooting with a current-gen action camera? Nope, but so far, the footage looks pretty decent. Quite usable if you're thinking of using this for vlogging or starting up your own YouTube channel. Wow, this is so much better than what I started out with. Can you imagine an iPhone 6S? I think this is a great phone. Like I said, if shooting at night is your thing, this is it. It's simply the best I've seen so far in terms of low light videos. For pictures, yeah, you can make the case that it's not going to be much better than other premium devices that's got a night mode in it. But for low light videos coming from what I've seen in the market, nothing else comes even close. It's also got a great QHD screen with LTPO, Super Vook charging right off the bat because it does include an 80 watt power brick in the box. So what do you think of the X5 Pro? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching, appreciate your time. If you like this video, please smash like and share. If you're new here to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe and tap the bell button to stay notified of new content from this channel. Also, a big shout out to these legends who support this channel by contributing a dollar or more per month through the crowdfunding website Patreon. You can also join us on the world's most popular gaming chat app, Discord, if you want to hang out or chat. Link is in the box down below. Click here to watch my review of the next sexiest phone from Apple or watch another video from this channel.